Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Haraka Kodash. I want to give double honors to the elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth, the elder apostles, and also want to acknowledge the Akiam pushing this truth with sincerity. <coughs> So I'm just going to jump into the first book, Maccabees chapter 1, and literally just go into, uh, you know, this history that has been removed from the Bible, because this book is in the Apocrypha, which means, the word Apocrypha means sent away, hidden, okay? So because the Edomites, <clears throat> they removed it in 1611. Because it's got a lot of dirt on them. And, uh, <coughs> you know, if you read this book, then you understand a lot of the oppression and you understand history of uh, the Greeks and how they, uh, you know, basically changed the whole, changed the whole history because they removed it. Because they didn't want, they didn't want us Israelites to uh, know the truth. <coughs> It says on First Maccabees 1 and 1, And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chetim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes. And he reigned in his steed the first over Greece, <coughs> and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. And went through the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, and so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he exalted and his he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. Okay, now you have to remember that back in Genesis, Isaac um, blesses Esau, his son, with the sword. Uh, <clears throat> so that's that's how that's why the Edomite is in power right now because Isaac, who is actually Yahweh Shai, um, the same spirit, you know, through reincarnation, Yahweh Shai was also Isaac, um, <clears throat> but. Isaac gave the uh, blessing of the sword, meaning war, to Esau, his son. All right, and that's back in uh, Genesis. So let's let's go that go to that really quick. Uh, Twenty-seven forty. <clears throat> so basically, Esau just got done crying. Let me start at thirty-eight. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So he's literally crying because Jacob had supplanted him and uh, Isaac had already blessed his brother Jacob. Okay? So it says on 39, Genesis 27, 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of the heaven from above. <coughs> so what that means, the fatness of the earth is where Esau dwells right now because he has the uh, nicest places. You know, the Rothschilds, I'm sure if you Google their mansions, they're very, um, you know, they're very nice dwellings um but that's his blessing and not only that if you if you drive in any city in america you go to the suburbs and especially the newer suburbs in the cities you know the nicest houses the nicest places belong to esau the so-called white man and of the dew of heaven from above and by the sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, 
that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. All right. <clears throat> so I just wanted to bring the uh, understanding on Esau's blessing. The so-called white man's blessing is the sword or war. Nobody can war with the so-called white man because of his blessing. So let's go back to Maccabees. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is basically, Maccabees is talking about when, is describing when Esau started really using his blessing, that sword. All right, and we're at Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 1 and 4. And he gathered a mighty strong host, which is, the word host means army, <clears throat> and ruled over the countries and the nations and the kings who became tributaries to him, unto him. That mean while he was conquering, um, you know, he was forcing these other nations and kings to pay uh, taxes to him. Tributary is a tax or money. After the, uh, and after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. <clears throat> so Alexander reigned twelve years and then died, and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they shall put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and the evils were multiplied in the earth. All right, so... The evils were multiplied in the earth, according to the Bible. All right. When the white man took over. And let's just get that really quick over in Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right. So the earth has been given unto the hands of the wicked, and how did they get the earth? With their blessing, the sword, okay? And <clears throat> I'm going to go to Maccabees 3 and 48, because we just read in that verse in Job 9.24 that the wicked covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So here's a, you know, First Maccabees 3 and 48, Talking about the heathen right here. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. <coughs> so this is where you get Caesar Borgia, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. You know, they painted in Europe over the, uh, the paintings of the true image of Yahweh Shai the true Messiah, who is a so-called black man from the tribe of Judah. All right. So 1 Maccabees 3 gives you the history on how he covered this heathen, the so-called white man, covered the uh, the likeness of, of the true image of Yahweh Shai. All right. They opened up the book of the law, which is the Bible, and they, you know, they went in and changed the images to look like themselves. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Go back to Maccabees 1. And there, this is uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, named Epiphanes. Son of Antiochus the king, who had been in hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow. And this is just like in Egypt when. Uh, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. You know, they began to murmur and complain. They missed Egypt. They wanted to go back to Egypt, their captivity or slavery, because it was easier and they had grown accustomed to that lifestyle of slavery. 
But when Moses took them out and they had to deal with, you know, the, the 40 years in the wilderness, you know, they, they didn't like that, you know. And this speaking of the two-thirds. So I'm actually going to go <coughs> and let's read about the wicked-ass two-thirds who are a part of Israel. The ones that are going to die during the nuclear war. Um, we'll start at Zechariah 13 and 8. Actually, let's, let's go to 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. It's talking about waking up the, uh, the who's got ble whose blessing is the sword? Esau. We just brought that out in Genesis. We brought that out. So, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, meaning hit, hit or destroy Israel, who is the shepherd. And the sheep were scattered, right? And he's going to turn mine hand. It says, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Uh, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name. And I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh is my power. <clears throat> so this is speaking of the two-thirds, right? In verse 8, it talks about the two parts therein shall be cut off and die. And let's go read about them again in Maccabees. <laughs> so, <clears throat> verse 11. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow. So this is that two-third mentality, all right? These wicked men out of Israel. These are the ones who are going to get destroyed um, through the fire. We just read it in Zechariah 13, verse 8. <clears throat> so this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen, right? And our people are still doing that, right? You have to go to Esau to get a driver's license, to get a fishing license, to get a marriage license. If you have, need any type of license, guess who you got to go to? You have to go to the wicked in this kingdom. And it's all part of the curses, all right? <clears throat> Our people are cursed because Yahweh cursed us because we turned away from him. Uh, where the Maccabees, first Maccabees 1 and 14, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Okay, so what is that all about? That means uncircumcised is not necessarily meaning you you literally uncircumcised your penis. Uh, no. It's talking about, you know, you know, hearkening to uh, false doctrines, to false idols, you know, making a covenant with the heathen, so-called white man in this case. Um <clears throat> and, you know, forsook the holy covenant meaning they forgot the laws of Yahweh, okay? Um, now we're in 16, one, Maccabees 1, 1, 16. Now, when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt, that he might have dominion over two realms. All right? So that's how this Edomite is. You know, he's still like this. You know, he, he it's not enough for him to rule over over one realm. He's, he's He wants to rule two realms in this case. So we're going to go to Obadiah 1 and 5, <clears throat> just to show you the characteristics of Esau. 
If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they have not stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All right, so in verse 5, it's talking about robbers at night. And if they stole grapes, wouldn't they, once they had enough, wouldn't they just stop? Would they not just leave some grapes, it says? Well, that's Esau's characteristic. You know, Esau is not only going to steal the grape, he's going to steal the, the, the vine, and he's going to pull out the root. He's going to take it all because he's never satisfied, right? Just like now, uh, what's he doing in uh, Venezuela? He's trying to put his, uh, his, uh, you know, his, his oppression and his and his power and his sword, uh, you know, against the people of Venezuela and trying to dictate who their president should be. Uh, he's trying to um, take control of their natural resources, which is the oil. But guess this this time. Guess what? This time, uh, the the uh, other heathen, they're not gonna. Ha they're not having it, right? Russia and um, Venezuela and uh, China, these these nations are not having it, these other heathen nations. So it says right here, Obadiah 1 and 2, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Thou art greatly despised. Esau is despised by the other nations. And uh, you're seeing that right now in, uh, in, the, in the news. America is, is despised. Because why? Because they never are satisfied. Just like we read in Obadiah. They'll, they'll take the branch, they'll take the grapes and the roots. They don't they don't <laughs> they don't just settle for the grapes, you know. Esau wants everything. <clears throat> Alright, let's get back to Maccabees, first Maccabees and verse Um Let's see. Verse 17. <clears throat> so yeah, let's go back. The last part of 16. He thought to reign over Egypt that he might have the dominion of two realms. He didn't just want, you know, Greece and Rome. He, he wanted Egypt too. Wherefore he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy, and made war against Ptolemy, the king of Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled and many were wounded to death. Okay. <coughs> this is verse 19. Thus they got strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof. And after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the hundred forty and third year, and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. And entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlestick of light and all the vessels thereof and the tables of the shewbread and the pouring vessels and the vials and the censers of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. He took also the silver and the gold, and the precious vessels. He also took the hidden treasures which he found. When he had taken all the way, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre. All right, and massacre—that's where you get that uh, that that word mass, like Catholic mass. You know, the, they go to mass, or it also deals with the masses of people, and spoke very proudly. Therefore, there was a great mourning in Israel in every place where they were. So that the princes, princes and the elders mourned, and the virgins and the young men were made feeble, and the beauty of women was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. The land was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all of the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. And uh, the same thing is happening to, in today's world. You know, Israelites are confused, so confused they don't even know who they are anymore. All right, um, they're they're so confused that they're following false doctrines, false idols, 
unknowingly, all right? You try to tell a uh, so-called Mexican that Jesus Christ is not the truth, and they'll lose their mind. Why? Because there's confusion among them, all right? And let's go to 2 Thessalonians Thessalonians and second and number verse two. Let's actually we'll read we'll read verse ten. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right, so <clears throat> these people are our own people, Israelites, so-called blacks, Native Americans, and so-called Hispanics. They don't love the truth and they don't receive the truth anymore because they've been deceived by the serpent, okay? So as you can see, it says in verse 11, that Yahweh shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. So that's why they believe in Jesus Christ. That's why they believe in the Catholic Church. That's why they believe in Jehovah's wickedness. That's why they believe in the Protestant Church or the Mormon Church. All these different false doctrines that Esau has created, the so-called white man, uh, has our people in darkness, okay? And they're believing a lie with strong delusion. That's what Yahweh says. All right. <clears throat> All right. Back to Maccabees. And we'll jump down to 29. And let's see. So yeah, let's go back to 28. The land was also moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. In 2019, you better you better believe your you better believe your ass that the house of Jacob is still covered with confusion. Alright? You guys don't want to leave your false doctrines. Uh 29. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude and spake peaceable words unto them but all was deceit for when they had given him credence he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel all right and this right here reminds me of Genesis I mean of Donald Trump because Donald Trump he speaks peaceable words, right? Even though he's an asshole and he and he and he's arrogant, you know he he's part of that deception, man. And he's got a lot of you got you got Israelites who support him because of this verse right here. He spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. All right, because the serpent, the so-called white man, Satan, the devil, he's uh, you know, he's he's good with his words, and uh, once we go into Jacob's trouble, which is martial law, you know, <laughs> these dumbasses who voted for Trump and who and and who um, support him, you know, they're they're gonna realize that you know they've literally, uh, you know, fell for that deception from that beast. And it actually goes back to, uh, let's go to Genesis 3 and 1. <clears throat> now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, which Yahweh, the power, Elohim, the power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath Yahweh said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye not, ye shall not surely die. And why did he tell her that? Because, let's go back to the top of the page, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Right? He beguiled her. He tricked her. Right? He made it, like, like we read in Maccabees, you know, his words were um, 
were, um, you know, what did it say? His words were peaceable words, right? Verse 30. And he spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit, right? We just got that out of Genesis 3 and 1. He spoke peaceable words to Eve, and it was deception, right? And then he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it, all right? So that's the same thing. He's, he's done it over and over, and he's still doing it. <coughs> so um, now we're going to go... Uh, to uh, 30, <coughs> 31. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and the walls thereof on every side. So, you know, just like he, he's taken the spoils of uh, Jerusalem, you know, that, that's what he does. He doesn't, he's never satisfied. Just like we read earlier in Obadiah uh, 1 and 5, it said that he, he's, you know, even the robbers who come at night and steal the grapes, once they have enough, they stop, but not Esau. Esau wants to keep taking and taking and taking, and he doesn't want to negotiate. Right? He's deception. He's, he's a serpent. Everything that comes off his mouth and off his lips is deception. All right. Uh, we're going to be on 1 Maccabees 1 and 32. But the women and children took they captive and possessed the cattle. Then built the city of David with a great and strong wall, and with mighty towers, and made it a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and victuals, and when they had to gather, gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there, and so they could become a sore snare. For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and it then defiled it. So they defiled it. How do they're still defiling it, right? They they're making themselves as God by uh, using the image of Jesus Christ, who is a so-called white man, when they know that the uh, Messiah is a uh, so-called black man from the tribe of Judah with woolly hair and um, you know, skin that looks like it was bronze burned into a furnace, okay? Meaning dark skin. <clears throat> um, in so much, this is 38, in so much that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her, and her own children left her. All right. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into reproach, her honor into contempt. All right. So this is just literally dealing with Israel, the people of Israel. They, you know, <clears throat> when the heathen, you know, polluted the temple, when they conquered, uh, you know, starting out with Alexander the Greek, and then you had uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. You know who took over? They, uh, <clears throat> you know, they 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 basically profaned, um, and and you know, you know, polluted the sanctuary, which was the temples. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased. This is verse forty, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to the whole kingdom that all should be one people. This is just like America, right? They're proving that they want one people. Now they want you to be called Americans. They don't want you to know you're an Israelite. You know, they don't want you to know you're God's chosen people. Um, 42. And everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. <clears throat> yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profane the Sabbath. And this is still happening, ladies and gentlemen, in America. Babylon the Great. Still happening. All right. They are still, Israelites are still consenting to the religion of the serpent. And, uh, you know, if you can't see this, then, you know, it's not for you. And you can stay in those uh, false doctrines. Because Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, when they visit the earth, 
they have a missile with your name on it. Okay? Number 44. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow strange laws of the land. All right, and let's go to the precept on that, which is in Deuteronomy, and we'll go to 28 and we'll go to 64. <clears throat> it says, And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all the people from one end of the earth even unto the other, and, the, and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. The wood and stone it represents Christianity. The stone represents um, Islam. All right. So literally, our people have fallen to those curses from Deuteronomy. You know that Yahweh said would happen if we didn't follow His laws, if we forsook His laws, which we read in Maccabees that the Israelites did forsake His laws. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's why we are dealing and drinking from this cup right now. I'm talking about Israel. We're drinking from the cup, which is, uh, you know, the curses. Um, and everyone should leave his, this is 42, should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. The word profane means um, out of the temple, right? So they took the Sabbath out of the temple. That's why people don't celebrate the Sabbath. Instead, they follow sun worship and they go to church on Sundays uh, to worship Baal or Satan or the so-called white man. That's what he is. He's the deceiver. Uh, this is verse 44. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. All right. What are the strange laws of the land? It's all this crap that Israel and uh, these heathen are, are following. All right. We're coming up on a holiday for the heathen, which is the 4th of July. You know, you're going to have lots of Israelites, uh, Jake, two-third niggas, they're going to be at the uh, 4th of July festivities here uh, on the 4th of July. They, every year they throw a big ass, you know, party to, to you know, f a holiday for them, so they call it, right? And forbid, this is 45, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and they that should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves and chapels and of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. So swine's flesh is, you know, there's a dietary law and, uh, you know, bacon is not on the menu according to Yahweh. All right, the swine's flesh, you can see that right there. Um, so I'm going to go to the precept on that really quick or a precept. We'll go to Deuteronomy 14 and 8. And that says, this is a dietary law, part of it. it. says, And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Alright, he's speaking of the swine, the pig. You're not supposed to eat that thing, and you're not even supposed to touch that dead carcass. You know? So you need to keep the commandments, man, of Yahweh, and, uh, and, and you know... Stop eating all that swine's flesh. It's going to kill you. Literally, it's bad for you. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're back in uh, chapter 1, 1 Maccabees, chapter 1. And we're going to go to 48 is where I left off. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation. All right. So, literally, what did Esau? He he he's you know he's got us in darkness. You know the men of Yahweh. We repented. We've we've took the time to study the truth, learn and discover. You know these revelations. But the, the two-thirds that we read about in Zechariah 13, verse 8, they're going to stay in darkness because they're not diligent about learning this truth. Um, 
So to the end, this is 49, First Maccabees 1 and 49, to the end that they might forget the law and to change all of the ordinances. All right, and that prophecy has came to pass because Esau has caused our people, the so-called black, so-called Native American, so-called Hispanic, to forget the law. Nobody knows the laws. All right, people think they know the Ten Commandments. People think the Ten Commandments were, uh, you know, given for uh, America. And you're a dumbass if you think that, right? Because it says in Romans, <coughs> let's go to Romans real quick. Uh, Romans 9 and 3. Let me just find Romans. Okay, here we go. Romans 9 and 3. What does this read? Um, actually, you know what? Romans 9 and 4. He's talking about the Israelites. Paul is in this verse. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. All right? So right there it tells you. Uh, who does the adoption belong to? The Israelites. Who does the glory belong to? Israelites. Who does the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises? They all belong to the Israelites, right? Anybody that teaches you that you know the Bible is for everybody, or that everybody has salvation, you know they're lying because we we're getting it out right now. The the Bible does not say that. All right. Um, 49 is where I'll be. And verse 49 says, To the end they might forget the law and change all ordinance, all the ordinances, ordinances. And whosoever would not according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. All right. And so there it is. You know, you, you're not following Esau's rules and you're not. You know, hearkening to his beast system, meaning you take the microchip or, you know, you do any other abominations, then uh, you're going to die in this kingdom, okay? And if Esau doesn't kill you, Yahweh will, alright? You can bet, you can bet on that. Um, let's see, in the self-same manner, this is verse 51, wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit everyone that had forsook the law, so they committed evils in the land and drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for succor. Now the fifteenth day of the month, Caslu, in the hundred forty and fifth year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and build idols, idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side, and burn incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. And they had went and they and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, they burnt them with fire. So these, these Greeks took this book out because, look, it's showing them burning the Bible, you know. And, and the Protestants, they took this Apocrypha out because they didn't want you to know they were doing all these. They didn't want you to know they were burning the, the you know, the, the Bible. And then if you go back up to, um, let's see, we're at 57. And whosoever was found of the book of the Testament or if any committed to the law... The king's commandment was that they should be put to death. So they were oppressing Israelites and Jew and, and Judites because you could not be called a Jew. All right. It was against the law in Greece. OK. Well, actually, and this is dealing with Egypt because Greece uh, had taken over with uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, the wicked ruler. All right. <clears throat> Let's just keep reading this. Um, Thus did they by their authority unto the Israelites every month to as many as were found in the cities. Now the five and twentieth day of the month they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of Yahweh. And they're still doing that, man. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, these Edomites, they are literally sacrificing up unto idols. Blaspheming the name of Yahweh, blaspheming the image of Yahweh, 
they're setting themselves up as Yahweh. Okay, uh, verse sixty. And at that, and at which time, according to the commandment, they put to death a certain woman that had caused their children to be circumcised, and they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses, and slew them that had circumcised them. Howbeit, many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore, uh, they rather to die, that they might be, not be defiled with meats, and that they might not profane the Holy Covenant. So they died. Alright, so these people, some of these Israelites, you know, didn't want to stoop to the level of the heathen or the two-third Israelites, right? They, they weren't going to take the uh, profanity of the holy, um, you know, of the... Uh, the defiled place that the Greeks turned it into. Um, and there was a very great wrath upon Israel. Verse 64. And guess what? That wrath is coming back in America. Esau, remember, judgment starts at the house of Jacob. Starting out with Jacob's trouble, which we're already manifesting in that. You know, all you got to do is turn on the news. You see that Trump is... Uh, you know, calling to deport millions, um, you know, this week, he said in his own words. All right. And now you're seeing the, the kids that are in those uh, facilities. Uh, right now, it's just Issachar he's dealing with. But pretty soon, Esau is going to, um, you know, come with great wrath. And as the Bible says, judgment starts at the house of Israel. So guess who's going to get fucked over? It's not just Issachar. Right now, they are. You know, and this is all Bible prophecy. Pretty soon it's going to be everybody. You know, if you look brown or if you don't look white or if you don't, you're not an Edomite, guess what? Esau is going to come down on your ass. And there's going to be FEMA camps and Walmarts are going to be, you know, evacuated and made. Not, I shouldn't say evacuated, cleaned out. They're going to take all those groceries out of there and all that merchandise and they're going to turn it into a FEMA camp, right? Said it before, I'm going to say it again. Walmart means martial law. All right? Wall is law spelled backwards. Uh, Mart uh, is, is short for martial law. So all of these plagues are coming to uh, America, including the microchip and including the, you know, the Jacob's trouble and including the, um, the, the good-looking... Uh, Every actually, I'm going off a little bit because it's actually getting late and I'm tired. Of, but but what I'm saying is, there's going to be a huge wrath upon Israel at the hand of Esau and this uh, American uh, Babylon, right? And uh, that's why we need to gather this oil, which is wisdom, and prepare for this oppression that is coming to uh, you know this this queendom of Esau's, starting out with the house of Jacob. Okay, so with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Ha Raka Kodash. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who taught us this truth, and I want to acknowledge the brothers out there pushing this truth with sincerity. All right, Shalom, Shalom unto the elect.